everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. I'm here with Dr. David Kirkpatrick. And hey, Christy. Hey, Doc. And we're about to delve into all things implants. Yes, we are. And I know you're tired from today. You've been talking about <laughs> implants all day long. I have. And now you get to do it, Doc. I, know. I get now to watch get to the trade pro out. do it. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So she's been doing a seminar, a live seminar today, and I was operating with implants today. And now we're going to talk about implants on our webinar. So we'll Perfect. jump right in. Thank you guys for joining us on a Tuesday night at seven o'clock. I know there's probably some better things that you got to do, maybe, but at least you're gonna be here hearing all about implants tonight. So a little bit about me, so you guys know who you're listening to tonight. My name is David Kirkpatrick. I did all of my school at the University of Kentucky and then surgery with residency I did at University of Florida yep. in Jacksonville. And very fortunate to do my surgical training in Jacksonville at University of Florida um, because there we were exposed to kind of the entire specialty of oral maxillofacial surgery, especially with implants and especially with what we use a lot here with our new teeth now procedure, the zygomatic implant. And you know, one of the other things that it's listed on this slide that's up now, um, I am a board certified oral maxillofacial surgeon which is extremely important when you're thinking about who's gonna be treating you and doing a procedure like this on you or your loved one. Um, we've got a couple of new surgeons that we're very happy yep, to have with so us. So excited. We've got Dr. Vorwald who joins us um, here at our Lakeland office. Mm -hmm. And we have Dr. Nunez who we're very excited about who just started up in the villages um, actually yesterday. A lot of new talent so, to the team, dog. Absolutely. And both both of these surgeons were here training with us for a few months here in our Lakeland uh, Surgery Center, and we're very excited about having those part of the team and being able to help us, you know, treat more patients. And, you know, because we were starting to get extremely busy and patients do not like to wait, yeah. especially for a procedure like this when they're getting really excited about the possibility of having implants and fixed bridges and teeth that they can eat things that they want and they look nice, yeah. and it's not a denture. So we're excited about having uh, those two surgeons as part of our team. So, the, and the locations right now, servicing new teeth now, are the Lakeland location, which is where me, Dr. Richards, and Dr. Vorwald are currently at, and Dr. Nunez is at our new teeth now location in the villages. So I'm gonna start, and a little bit different tonight because I'm going to hit on some points that I think are really important for patients that are considering a procedure like this, especially when they're considering like where to go to have a procedure like this. And I think these key differentiators are important for you guys to know when you're considering, you know, having someone do an implant procedure. Board certified oral surgeons, extremely important zygomatic implants. So those are for people who do not have a lot of bone in the upper jaw. And we see patients all day every day who have either been to other, lo uh, other surgery centers or other institutions mm -hmm. to look for a procedure like this where they want to replace their teeth with implants. And if they do not have enough bone in the upper jaw, which is the most common area to be missing bone, um, then they're either offered extensive bone grafting procedures, which take a long time for the procedure to heal, to be able to put implants in, or they're just told that they just, they don't have enough bone for implants. And here with the zygomatic implants that we can incorporate into our new teeth now procedure, patients were able to treat those patients literally in one day without the bone grafting, without waiting on the graft to heal, and get a really solid foundation to hook these bridges up to. And then all of our patients are placed under general anesthesia. That is something that unless you've done a lot of these procedures or you've actually been through a procedure like this, you really don't know how important that is to know that you're under true general, general anesthesia with a separate anesthesia team here. So we can focus on the surgical part, mm -hmm. and it's not an IV sedation where I'm doing the sedation and the procedure, we have a totally separate anesthesia team. So the patient's under general anesthesia, they, we have the airway protected with a breathing tube, 
and that in itself makes the procedure as safe as possible. So we can control everything. We do not have to worry about, are we using a little too much irrigation? Are we trying to um, you know, keep the patient comfortable, but deep enough to where they're not having any pain? You're totally asleep, just like you'd be for any other outpatient surgical, surgical procedure. And it's the safest way possible for us to complete the job that we need to do to get you the best support with implants. So one thing to keep in mind when you're considering this. So dental implants, a lot of people, you know, come on the webinar or they come to see us for a consult and they, they really don't even really know what an implant is. Yes. And we get asked this question a lot. Well, what exactly is the implant? Is the implant the tooth? Mm -hmm. Well, the implant's not really the tooth. The implant replaces the roots of the teeth. So they go into the bone, they anchor into the bone, mm -hmm. which gives us a solid foundation to build the bridge or the teeth on. So, and the implant, they are recognized by our National Association as the best way to replace missing teeth. And what an implant looks like is this. So it's the silver structure that you see that's kind of threaded like a screw. This goes in the bone and then it gives us a foundation, like I said earlier, for the tooth to get built on the implant, on the implant surface. And what we do here with our new teeth now procedure is we do these fixed upper bridges. So we're, we're essentially replacing everything in one jaw with implants. On the upper, we typically do six implants on the upper jaw, mm -hmm. and then the entire bridge is fixed and screwed in to those six implants. Never comes in and out. There's no wings that go underneath the gums or the lips and nothing covering the roof of the mouth. You treat them like natural teeth. You brush them, toothbrush, toothpaste, you water pick under the spaces, mm -hmm. and you go for cleanings every six months. Yep, just like traditional teeth. Just like we do with our natural teeth. Yep. And then the lower, on the lower jaw, we do something very similar. Sometimes we do four implants, sometimes we do five implants, sometimes we do six, like you can see on this picture. And what um, determines how many implants we place on the lower jaw is how much bone patients have so we can spread implants out because you do not want to put implants too close together. That's not a great thing for the zirconia bridge, which we're going to talk about a little later. But you want as many implants as we can put in as long as they're spread out to get you a really, really solid foundation to build the bridge on. So tonight we're going to talk, not only talk about implants, but we're going to let patients that I've personally treated kind of tell their story and show some before and after pictures. Um, and I think that does a really nice job of, you know, kind of passing along how we can do this procedure and help patients, not just with you and I sitting here exactly. talking about what it. Exactly. What better yeah. way than to hear it from the person who and went through it. Exactly. And Beverly is a great patient that I treated in the past, and I'm going to let her tell her story. I have a top denture, and it does not stay in place, and it rubs my gums constantly, and I don't take them out like a probably should either, you know, because I just refuse to walk around with nothing in. There's nothing like sitting around speaking with someone and having to be very careful that it doesn't fall, and I just didn't want to have to worry about that anymore, and the pain just being able to to chew. You know, sometimes it's hard. You're eating a carrot, and it, it's very crunchy, and, you know, when you bite down, it hurts, so I just think it's going to be totally different because even when I was in my 20s I had bad teeth so it was always you know when you would smile <clears throat> you would um, cover your mouth it just becomes a habit and I guess as I've gotten older I've just learned how to smile without showing much to you. In the morning of the surgery I came in and the staff of new teeth now made me feel very comfortable. I was nervous and they talked to me and they tried to put me at ease. And we went back and then she says, okay, I need you to count backwards. And that was it, that's all I remember. And when I woke up, I was actually just, <laughs> I don't, I, it was amazing. It was, you look up and they're like, you're done. But it, it felt like I had just gone to sleep. And I had no pain, I was amazed at the fact that I had no pain. They handed me the mirror and I was 
I was just very happy. I was happy with the way my mouth looked. I was happy with the way everything was set up and I knew at that point that I didn't have to worry about taking anything out and it was like having a full set of, of natural teeth that was given to me. That made it worth everything. At first when I told my husband about the new teeth now, he was skeptical. He he had no idea and of course, you know, there is a price. You have to be ready to invest, but when you look at the investment you're making, that's in yourself. Once it was complete and I was actually coming out of my shell, he could tell a difference in me. And he was glad at that point that we did it. And when we were talking about it, he said, okay, whatever it takes. I have a coworker that's really good friends, but she knew the depth of it because she also knew that I had worn dentures for years. When I got back, she and I were in the office and we were talking and I was telling her about how the whole procedure went with new teeth now. And I guess I was still doing the covering my mouth when I, when I talked or when I smiled and, and she just took my hand and she said, stop. She said, your mouth looks amazing. Your face, everything, your smile is beautiful. Stop. It was hard to get to that point, but now I can actually smile and, and know that I don't have the same mouth that I had before, so it's amazing. New Teeth Now gave me the gift to be able to look in the mirror and actually see myself, to see the Beverly that I haven't seen in a very long time, the one that I've missed dearly and I'm glad is back. I feel like I am the Beverly I should be. Okay, so kind of cool to listen to Beverly's yeah. story and kind of her journey with, with their New Teeth Now procedure. And you, you, you know, you see her before and after picture and that's just amazing. She looks, she looks absolutely wonderful. Yes, yeah, she does. Great job, Doc. So, you know, a lot of people will come in and they'll ask us like, well, why should we do the New Teeth Now procedure or why should I have my teeth taken out or why should I want to have implants put in? And, you know, there's, there's these bullet points. There's a lot of there's a lot of reasons to do this procedure. But number one, and patients will hear me say this over and over and over again, definitely should be to restore your total body health. Um, that should always be the number one reason. You know, we, we're constantly telling patients this is not this is definitely not a cosmetic procedure. Yes, the teeth look great. Yes, you can you have a hand in picking out what color you want your teeth. You know what shape and size. But it, this is not a procedure where if you don't really have straight teeth, you don't come in and have your teeth taken mm -hmm. out and our new teeth now procedure. You have this done to rid any infection in the mouth, kind of get a clean slate, start all over, and have a really healthy mouth. That's number one. And then you get the benefit of they look really nice, like you could see with Beverly. When they look nice, they help yeah. your self-confidence. Exactly. Definitely helps bring out a smile. And the ability to eat, you know, a lot of people are having trouble eating either with dentures or pain with their current teeth if they're decayed or broken and you know it definitely helps you be able to eat the things you want and like we were talking with the general anesthesia you are asleep during the entire procedure and the post-operative pain level will definitely surprise you because it surprises us you know we do give you ibuprofen um, 800 milligrams if you can take ibuprofen or NSAIDs and we usually tell you to start that the night before the procedure. And then you take that every eight hours for the first three days. And that usually makes a big difference on the discomfort that you would have. We also recommend that as soon as you get home, and we actually put them on you here as soon as you wake up, ice packs on the outside of your face. And that helps with swelling, with discomfort, along with the ibuprofen. And then we do give you a narcotic if you need that for any breakthrough pain. So it's, you know, it's kind of, interesting and cool to see to know the work that we've done on a patient and we see them back for their first post-operative visit and they're like wow it wasn't really what i expected maybe maybe they had some swelling or bruising but they'll all say yeah i was really swollen but i didn't really have that much pain you know it was more just uncomfortable with some swelling and then some people have no swelling so it's hard to tell like who's going to get what and how bad the swelling or bruising is going to be. We tell everybody to expect that, and then hopefully you don't have that. I feel 
think I've heard most of your patients say that they experience little to no discomfort, which is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It is crazy. But I think a lot of people really do kind of follow recommendations and keep the ice yeah. packs on and take the ibuprofen or Tylenol, you know, just mm -hmm. before and never really let the pain get ahead of them. Yeah. So they stay caught up with it. So the who's a candidate for this procedure? Well, if you have no teeth, or you're really unhappy with dentures, then definitely you're a candidate for this. And this is one of the most common patients that we used to see all of the time, that it's kind of transitioning over to people with teeth are more um, common patients that we see. But the ones who have dentures are usually the ones that do not have a lot of bone. And those are the ones that would typically need the zygomatic implants. And then if you have a mouthful of bad teeth, definitely you're a candidate for this procedure. If you have severe periodontal disease, I mean, that's basically a mouthful of just a chronic low-grade infection yep. that you really need to get taken care of. And the only way to do that is to eliminate the source, which is the tooth. You take that out, put the implants in, and you know, the infection's gone. Yep. And then if you've ever been told that you do not have enough bone for implants, then you, I would highly encourage you to come see us for a consult. Um, because we see patients like that every day, who they've been, we're the second, third, fourth, fifth opinion sometimes, and it's almost like that we're their last hope. Yeah. Hey, you say you can treat me if I don't have a lot of bone, and I've been told by their providers that I do not have enough bone to kind of get used to a denture, and you know, I'm looking at the patient and walking through the CT scan with the patient, so they're seeing what I'm seeing, yeah. and they have, plenty of bone for us to do the new teeth now procedure, especially having zygomatic implants as you know, in our toolbox as part of the treatment options yeah. that we can offer. Um, and I heard we had some yeah, questions some coming. Yeah, fun in. questions today. Think now so, would be a great time. Yes, okay doc, so the first question that came through was this patient had their teeth extracted in February. If does a person great. need to wait for their mouth to be remodeled? And if so, how long before the implants can be placed? Um, so, it would depend, I would need to see you um, just to kind of check out your gums, examine the gums, obtain one of our CT scans that we do during the consult. Um, but I would say definitely it's possible to not have to wait mon months and months, yeah. like traditionally to place an implant how it was done in the past. Um, because we're doing that kind of at this yeah. the same day. Yep. So yeah. typically we would take the teeth out and put the implants in the same day. So if you had your teeth out in February, mm -hmm then yeah, we should still be able to do that fairly soon without waiting on the bone to totally remodel. But I would wanna do just a quick exam to make sure that there's no active infections, no dry sockets, you know, anything that would possibly, you know, throw a little monkey wrench yeah. into the healing process after I do your implants. So if everything looks like it's healing pretty straightforward and the way it should look if you had teeth out in February, then we could, jump right into implants. Perfect, and then the next question that came through was, do we do full mini implants, full set of mini implants? No, um, okay. we do not do any mini implants. A single, in, a single mini implant or a full mouth yeah. of mini implants. Um, mini implants are in our world, they're temporary implants. So we see patients all the time that have the so-called mini implant placed with an overdenture that snaps on. And they're like, yeah, you know, they put eight implants in my upper jaw. And when I see them for a consult to do our new teeth now procedure, they've got like three left. Yeah. And they'll just say like, oh yeah, like, you know, they started coming out six months after I had them put in. And every time I pull my denture out, I'm always scared that there's gonna be another implant yeah. come out. Oh so, and that is very routine. There's nothing that I will ever want to do in my practice that I would think would not last or be more of a permanent solution yeah. for a patient. My philosophy is do this the right way the first time and never have to operate on you again. I mean, that's literally what I tell patients in, our, in consults. Yeah. I'm like, you know, when I'm gonna try to give you as much stability as I can and a foundation for your bridge, my goal at the end of the day, when, when we're waking you up at the end of the procedure, I never wanna have to operate on you again. Not that I don't want to see you again, because I'm going to see you <laughs> for, for post-ops, post -ops. and I want to see how pretty the final teeth look in <laughs> yes, six months, exactly. but I never want to have to take you back to the operating room. So I'm going to do it the right way the first time, and we're done. Perfect. 
And then the next question was, this per potential patient had watched multiple videos on dentists and hygienists talking about water picks for hygiene on all on fours or hybrids. And they wanted to know what are our thoughts on flossing and then just also like what are the pros and cons versus a water pick? Oh yeah, sure, that's a great question. Um, and we talk about that a lot with our patients during the consult, the day of the procedure, during the follow-up appointments, mm -hmm. and especially when you get into your final yep. um, bridges. So typically what I recommend right after surgery, the, I mean, even the, like the same day, is just toothbrush, toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Brush them, brush your gums, brush where the stitches are, brush the teeth, you know, the cleaner you keep mm -hmm. everything. Gum, any surgical incision that I make always heals better the cleaner it is. Mm -hmm. So I really want you to try to pay attention and keep that clean. And that does not mean go in and kind of scrub it as hard as you can. How some people really go after <laughs> brush. Yes. Just lightly brush everything yeah. right after surgery. And then we kind of tell you when you're cleared to start using a water pick, but I'm yep. a huge advocate for water picks. Um, after the gums have totally healed, after having this new teeth now procedure. Um, and then flossing, you really can't floss in between because they're all, it's a continuous bridge. So there's no spaces in between the mm -hmm. teeth. And that's why we're an advocate for the water pick to flush between your gum and the bridge, that little space that's there. That'll help get things that get trapped or that your toothbrush can't reach. But yeah, we love the water pick and my favorite um, item for you to use is the Sonicare toothbrush. Perfect. And then the final question that we had so far is, are there any issues with the implants, especially the zygo zygomatic implants, if a person needs a CT or an MRI? No, that's another good question. And we get, we can actually get yes. called about this from either a hospital or a patient's primary care physician, or patients will call back in and say, hey, I need to get a CT scan of my neck or I've got to get an MRI of, you know, yeah. the abdomen or yeah. it, wherever in the body. Yeah. And they always want to know, like, will the implants affect that? Yeah. And they do not. Yeah. So they're made out of titanium. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that, like, a hip replacement or a knee replacement would be made from. So they're very, very body-friendly material. And they do not interfere with any type of CT scan or MRI. Gotcha. Perfect. Well, I think yeah. that about wraps it up for now. Okay. Perfect. Good questions. Keep yes. those coming. So we'll move on. So, you know, we're talking about like dentures and implants. You know, if you look at this patient, her before and after picture, the before picture's on the left, after picture's on the right. The, um, and they really, neither picture looks bad. Yeah. It's just don't. one, the one on the left, she's wearing a full upper denture, yes. which she hates. And she had been to a lot of different other surgeons and dental specialist who had told her that she was not a candidate for implants and she came to see us just because she'd heard one of our um, commercials say that we treat patients that others turn away and that kind of brought her in for you know just one last you know endeavor to see if we could help her and we were able to place implants without a problem including zygomatic implants in her upper jaw and she was able to have a fixed, continuous bridge stable on implants that does not come in and out. And she was able to throw her denture away. And it was like a great day for her. And, you know, zygomatic implants, I keep talking about those. But, you know, here's another patient that traveled actually from around the, the New York area. And, you know, I can't imagine all of the oral surgeons and other dental specialists that she flew over yeah. or drove by to get to me, <laughs> which here, here in Lakeland, Florida. And so she came all that way because literally she knew that she didn't have enough bone for traditional implants. And she had been told about all these procedures she needed, extensive bone grafting. They were gonna take bone from her hip, put in her upper jaw. And so she came down just to see if she would be a candidate for zygomatic implants. And if we go back to the picture, you know, what she has there is all of her upper teeth are crowned. That's one continuous bridge on her remaining upper teeth roots. And that whole thing was failing. You could literally just take it with your fingers and move it up and down, and it was going to come out anytime. And she was scared to death that it was going to come out and she would have nothing. And with her job, with her work, with her family, 
she just she to her that was going to be horrifying if that came out and she did not have an option to replace her teeth so she came to see me and obviously we could put the zygomatic implants in or I would not put her yes, in this presentation exactly and this <laughs> is after after. <laughs> after the zygomatic implants wow and she just looks she looks beautiful and now she's got a full set of fixed teeth on those implants mm -hmm. that will do not come in and out she doesn't have to worry about them you know the teeth failing underneath or getting cavities and breaking and coming off they're screwed and fixed to those six implants you see there. And those two that are kind of going in a funny direction, angled in the back on each side, those are the zygomatic implants. And what they do is those anchor into the lower part of the cheekbone, mm -hmm. which is your zygoma. Yep. And they are extremely stable, very predictable, mm -hmm. especially here because we do those pretty much every day. Yep. Occasionally we'll see a patient that does not need the zygomatic implants, um, but a lot of our patients come in with severe atrophy or missing bone in the back part of the upper jaw. So we do a lot of those. And that is something that's also really important that if you do go somewhere else to get treatment and you need zygomatic implants, you wanna make sure they're not doing like two a year or two a month even. We do those routinely. I feel like you do them every day. Uh, Pretty Almost. much. Well, between, yeah, between yeah. Uh, me, Dr. Richards, and yeah. Dr. Vorwald, I would say that there's zygomatic implants being put into a patient every day here. And that, that's really important because yeah. we're starting to see zygomatic implants, you know, they used to be this kind of magical thing that some people talked about. Yeah. We were doing them. We've been doing them since 2007. Um, they've been around for like 25 years, but not a lot of people were taught yep. how to put them in and just not a lot of people do them. But now patients are starting to learn about them. And when patients start to learn about zygomatic implants and there's an alternative to extensive bone grafts, now they're really asking and pushing for a zygomatic implant. Why do I want you to bone graft and take bone from my hip or leg? Can't you just do a zygomatic implant? That's great that patients are being educated and know, know this is available because that's one of the reasons we started advertising, to spread the word that, hey, there's really an option for you if you've been told you do not have enough bone. The bad thing with that, though, is a lot of dentists, a lot of other specialists, a lot of oral surgeons who were really not adequately trained to do the zygomatic implant, they're almost being kind of forced to do them and tell patients they, they do offer those, they know how to do them, and we are seeing the effects of that. Almost every week, I'll see a patient that has had either regular implants placed by someone who really wasn't trained to do those or zygomatic implants, and we're doing redos. Yep. And it's, it's unfortunate, really, because there, it's a really difficult case. We've been able to treat and help everyone that we've seen so far. Um, but patients, on the patient side, they have to go through another, another procedure. Another procedure, yeah, another, another surgery. Another surgery, yep. another recovery, when we just really wish it could have been done right yep. the first time and be done. So just kind of something to keep in the back of your mind. So the zygomatic implant, this is a little video that we had created that kind of shows where, almost like a ghost impression of the implants going in. You see the four traditional implants in the front and the middle part of the upper jaw. The zygomatic implants are those two longer um, implants in the back on both sides. And then this is how the bridge is attached. There's titanium screws that go in and secure the bridge to the implants, fixed, full bridge, never comes in and out unless we or a dental provider takes that out, um, which we do recommend. Yeah. Every six months you come in, we take your teeth out, which is super easy. There's no numbing, there's no pain, there's nothing with it. It's a quick and easy procedure. We take them out, we get a good look at the gums underneath, and then put the teeth back in. And then for the most severe patients that we use, that we see quite a lot, 
um, are people who have really no bone in the upper jaw. And those patients require what we call the quad zygomatic implant case. And you can see this, this is a before picture on the left, obviously, with the lower teeth, and then the after on the right. And this is the only time that I ever do just four implants in the upper jaw, because there's really no other bone to utilize, and four zygomatic implants are extremely stable. So we do the four zygomatic implants, and this patient in particular um, did not have enough room to space out more than four on the lower, but those four, if you look how it matches up with the upper, they're perfect. Yeah. So we're able to, to really space those out three-dimensionally and secure the full bridge on the top and bottom on those implants. So once again, we'll talk about these differentiators because we've kind of hit on them. I've talked about it a couple times with the zygomatic implants. Make sure whoever is putting those in or treating you really is competent to do that, has a lot of experience doing that. And, you know, it's just, I can't stress the importance of that. Um, and then the general anesthesia, by far the safest way to do this procedure. And, you know, the, the oral, being an oral surgeon, we have so much extensive training from a surgical side and then the anatomy of the head and neck and it's just, if we're going to be doing an implant that anchors into your cheekbone, that's out of really the jaw. Yep. And you, really, you don't want someone who does not have extensive training from not only the anatomy and knowing what structures in the area that you can be safe operating around and what structures you really need to watch and stay away from. You know, one of my um, professors at University of Florida it, when we would have, we did a lot of head and neck trauma, we did a lot of head and neck cancer, and we did a lot of pediatric um, craniofacial procedures. And so we'd be operating on skull bases and taking the skull off and repositioning it. And one of his sayings is like, you know, there's things way back behind the jaws, way up around the eyes, that those areas are places that the sun was not meant to shine. And if the sun's going to shine there, you really need to be able to see what you're doing, know what's there, and know what to stay away from. So I'll leave that with you as a thought tonight. So new teeth now, our procedure will never need a root canal because there's no roots, they're implants. And they will never decay. And you know, we put these slides in there and they've been in this presentation for years. And we keep them there because we still get asked about that. So after I do this procedure, am I ever going to have to have a root canal again? And I'm like, no, they're, they're fake. <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully, you'll never need a root canal. You never need to have a cavity filled. You just got to brush your gums, brush your teeth, water pick, and have your teeth cleaned every six months. I mean, that's about as easy as we can make it, especially for the people that are scared of the dentist. Yeah, exactly. It's twice a day. And then they're very easy to maintain like we talked about, toothbrush, toothpaste, water pick, and the cleanings every six months. Yes. And Doc, I think we had some questions. A couple more questions it's a came per in. Perfect place. Perfect. So the first question was, this patient had some implants that were placed and failed. Would this affect the new teeth now procedures and also any health limitations? Um, so with implants that were placed and failed, mm -hmm. that's I kind of mentioned that a little earlier. Um, where we were talking about we're seeing a lot of patients who've had either a procedure similar to this or a procedure that someone was trying to do that was like this um, and patients having problems. So we're seeing a lot of patients that we're starting to redo and it's unfortunate but it does happen and yes we can definitely help you. We would just need to see you for a consult, get one of our CT scans and kind of go through that together to see how we would either get rid of the remaining implants that are there, get rid of any infection that was around some of the implants, maybe they've already fallen out, or just see what kind of bone you have so we know where we're gonna put the new implants. Gotcha. And then there's another question where um, this person wanted to know, isn't there other bone graft options where you don't have to take bone from the body? Yeah, there, there are other options and we do 
There's a lot of options. I mean, we do, we can take bone from your, the inside of your jaw, if it's just, but that only really gives us a very small amount. We can use cadaver bone. Um, we do a lot of um, PRF is what it's called, but it's basically we draw blood as soon as the IV goes in. So right before we put you to sleep, we draw a couple tubes of blood, put them in a centrifuge. And if you do not know what um, PRF is or PRP, definitely look that up um, after the webinar tonight. It's, it's an amazing product and it's from you. So it's your growth factors that we can actually make into a sticky membrane and we lay and cover different areas which promotes bone growth, promotes healing of the gum and we're, we're seeing really, really nice results with that. But with the other bone options other than your hip or your bone or your leg, uh, for bone grafts, it all depends on how much bone needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So if there's a gigantic area because you have no bone in the upper jaw, you really want to use autogenous bone, which is bone we would take from the patient, and that's coming from the hip or the leg. Gotcha. And then here's a question that we get pretty often. Um, the zygomatic implants, can they be felt by pressing on the person's face if they get them? Um, no, they should not be, you should not be able to feel the zygomatic implant because they go into the upper jaw and then span to the cheekbone and they're embedded into the cheek. You should not be able to feel that out here or anywhere on the face. Um, they are very protected because there's, there's mucosa, which is like the skin on the inside of the mouth, muscle, fat, there's a lot of soft tissue that covers these as well. So no, you should not be able to feel those by pressing on the face. Gotcha. And then we have one more question that's almost on every patient's mind that walks through the door. Are there any limitations on what they can eat if they move forward with the full mouth procedure? When you get into your final bridge mm -hmm. and your implants have healed, there are no limitations. Your diet would consist of anything that you would be normally eating with natural teeth. So anything that would break a natural tooth, a jawbreaker, yes. something really, really hard that you could be like, oh my gosh, I broke my tooth. That could potentially break these, but thankfully the zirconia bridges that we use for the final teeth, they're actually stronger than your natural teeth. So you can eat things that you probably wouldn't even be able to with your natural teeth now in your, with, with the zirconia yeah. bridge. Mm -hmm. But that's after everything is healed. So for the first six months, we do put you on a limited diet when you're in your temporary bridges. And that consists of anything you can, my rule of thumb is anything that you can cut with a fork, you can eat with your temporary teeth while your implants are fusing. The number one implant killer that we would see is if a patient really overdoes it from a diet standpoint and starts chewing things that they shouldn't. But, you know, we, we know patients want to try to push the limit or I'll get, you know, I'll have this, um, a patient that will tell me a lot, well, you, you just, you, you don't know me. Like I broke my arm when I was 12 years old. The doctor said it'd take, you know, like 10 weeks to heal and they healed in two. <laughs> I cut my cast off and the arm was fine. But you know, with implants, they yeah. really do take about four to six months mm -hmm. for your bone to actually grow and fuse to that implant. And until that happens, if you start really chewing hard, chewy foods, you just, it just increases your risk of failure. And in my opinion, why do you want to do that? You know, you're going to go through the procedure. It's going to be something that should last you decades and decades of happiness and eating the things that you yeah, want. Exactly. So just get through that initial healing, mm -hmm. get your permanent teeth in, and then eat what you want. Exactly. It's only six months. Yeah. But, yep, I think that concludes our questions for now. Okay. So, yeah, we can move right on. We will keep going. Perfect. So, all under one roof. This is another thing that I think that's very special about this place with our New Teeth Now procedure. The consult, the impressions, the, and the impressions is where we get records to make your temporary teeth that I use in surgery. And then the surgery, our lab is in-house, and the final teeth. Everything is made here at New Teeth Now. So we're not sending things out to like California to a lab to be made. Everything is made at New Teeth Now here. So, and that is really convenient for patients. It allows us to be able to really have a lot of quality control. 
um, and just get patients into their ultimate final goal of a nice set of teeth that not only looks good, but they can eat what they want. So having everything here all, all under one roof, and we hear that a lot too during a consult, where a patient has been to another office, say Orlando, and, or another state, and when they saw their general dentist, they sent them to an oral surgeon down the road or to another dental specialist, and they were going from location to different office at a different location to another place, to a lab somewhere else, mm -hmm. and you know, it was just traveling around no one was in the same place and the communication can get dropped. Here having everything under one roof, we're all talking all the time. We see each other every day and it's kind of a really a nice team effort. Yes. And actually we have one of our a restorative dentists um, at the end of this presentation that talks about how important that is to him at it, letting him help patients. So all, all under one roof, all in one day. So. And, and that doesn't count the consult and the impressions to make your temporary teeth. But the surgery is all in one day. Mm -hmm. If you do not have teeth, we put your implants in, put your temporary teeth on same day. If you do have teeth, we take your teeth out, put your implants in, temporary teeth on same day. So there's one procedure under general anesthesia, one recovery. So the procedure's done in one day. And if we go back to that slide, the temporary teeth are made out of acrylic, that's what you leave with, and your permanent teeth are made out of zirconia. And now is a very exciting time here at New Teeth Now, because the days of keeping patients in acrylic temporary teeth are gone. So we are now offering zirconia per like temporary teeth which is the same material that you get for your permanent teeth. So what we do is you still get acrylic teeth that same day. I see you back about a week later. We scan everything in your mouth to make it digital. We send that to our lab and they use that scan to mill a zirconia set of temporary teeth. So the same material, they feel amazing, they're very, friendly to the gum tissue, so your gums, in our opinion, and especially what we've seen over the past few months, the gums are healing fantastic around this. Acrylic can be porous, so things stick to the acrylic pretty easy, so you gotta work a little harder to keep them clean. Zirconia has a really polished, smooth surface, so it's harder for things to stick, which means it's easier to clean, easier on the gums, and they do not chip or break in the temporary, which acrylic occasionally can do that. And we have a patient call and say, hey, you know, I woke up this morning and I guess I clenched my teeth last night and I popped a tooth off in the acrylic. We're not seeing that with the zirconia anymore. Which, and there's really not anyone else doing this. That's a great So idea. it's super, super cool to be able to offer that to our new teeth now. This is uh, great for, all, for all, all of our out-of-state patients. This oh, is awesome. And, and that's, we started doing that in the beginning on the out-of-state yeah. patients because we did not want somebody to get back, mm -hmm. you know, home to Alaska, which I had a patient that, yeah. you know, came here from Alaska not too long ago. And, you know, it would be horrific if they got home yes. and they're there for a few months and their front tooth breaks off yes. or their bridge breaks Terrible. and they have to make the trip back to, to Lake One <laughs> yes. to fix that. Now in zirconia temporaries, that shouldn't happen. That's amazing. So it's a, it's a very cool thing to offer patients. Yeah. So your first visit here is a consultation. Um, so you'll meet one of our implant coordinators mm -hmm. and spend some time with me and the implant coordinator. They'll, the first thing they do is obtain one of the CT scans, which literally is a three-dimensional um, scan of your entire face. And then we go through this together and we develop a treatment plan that shows you exactly how much bone you have, where your good bone is, where I would place your implants, and I draw them on the scan so you see what I'm talking about. And you know, it is routine, even today. I had a consult at the end of the day, and he had had a couple of other opinions. And you know, I asked him at the end of the consult, which I always do, like, hey, any other questions? And you know, usually, patient will have a question or two or, or you know, they're kind of 
still processing everything. And I'm like, well, if you get back home, you're talking to friends, family, going to Dr. Google and something comes up, call back in. Usually we can answer your question over the phone, but you're more than welcome to come back in and talk to me about it. And, you know, I asked him if he had any questions and he was like, no, I don't. And that's the first time I've not had a question because I've had two or three other opinions, but no one went into what they were going to do to me surgically and what to expect as in detail as you have. No one went through the scan that you've got up on the, the TV screen mm-hmm. and show, show me where you're going to place the implants. And I'm sitting thinking like, gosh, that's just routine here yeah. for us. And I can't believe that other people really don't do that, but I guess they don't because we hear that quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, we, we do. And we hear, I feel like we, I always hear patients leave and they're like explaining to their wives where all their implants are going to go oh, after. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of awesome. Yeah. And you know, I kind of joke around that. <laughs> I almost can certify you in reading a CT scan if yes. you have a consult with me. i heard that. <laughs> so, our implant coordinators, you'll definitely meet um, one of these three young ladies when you come in. Uh, Shauna, Allie, and Crystal. All three of these ladies just can't say enough good things about. They're very knowledgeable to the point that usually when I come in the room, they get to you first mm-hmm. and they spend a little bit of time kind of just walking through the process and in general and then I come in and go over the CT scan do an exam and we kind of detail everything out where the implants would be placed and how the procedure would work and how much bone you have in certain areas and a lot of times the patient will be like oh yeah she already showed me the nerve like Shauna showed me that Allie told me about this Crystal already showed me the sinus and you know like oh yeah I've got a wisdom tooth in the back and I'm like gosh Oh, gosh. Do I even need to What be am here? I doing here? Like, <laughs> I'm just repeating everything that they've told you. I'll see you on but, Saturday. <laughs> but that makes me feel really yes. good because I know that the patient mm-hmm. is getting the correct information. Yes. They're getting a lot of detailed information mm-hmm. about their specific um, issue and how we can yep. fix that. Exactly. So our restorative team, Drs. Nafala, Dibbs, and Sorrento, uh, once again, Can't say enough good things about these three gentlemen. Mm -hmm. They're very good at what they do. They're extremely experienced with this procedure. And we're very lucky to have all three of those uh, guys here helping us, you know, make dreams come true by their, you always joke around with patients when they, when they've been with me, because they're really my patient for six months. We do the surgery. I see you for the follow-ups, the recoveries, Mm -hmm. and you're my patient until I know the implants have healed really nice to your bone and you're happy with how everything's healed and then you kind of graduate from me. And I'm down in the dungeon here on the first floor, which I think is, you know, the most exciting place to be. And then you graduate (laughs) and you get to go up to the penthouse and that's where your final teeth are fabricated. And that's where you get to hang out with one of the restorative doctors. The fun fun team. (laughs) Absolutely. So Dr. Dibbs is actually going to share a little video about his experience with being a part of the team and having everything here and under one roof. Perfect, let's hear it. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction, I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient that you can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable, not only in terms of having the the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient about, can we make this change? Is this going to be feasible? I can go across the hall get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall and 
they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note. They can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists and they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced, and I don't know of any other office that's like this. Okay. Perfect, Doc. I think so it's kind of a yeah. nice explanation. I think it is. I th and then more questions. Yes, I think we had one question. Um, this patient was wondering, are there any health conditions that would cause them to be, would like that would be barring a limitation for having the procedure? So typically, no. Um, but there would be a few things where, you know, we're constantly in communication with a patient's primary care doctor or any medical specialist that a patient may have because you are going under, you know, mm -hmm. general anesthesia for an outpatient yes. surgical procedure. And just like any other surgery, we want to make sure that we're doing this in the safest way possible. Mm -hmm. And we do obtain pretty much a basic EKG and lab work on everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, and then sometimes medical clearance or the appropriate, like a cardiac clearance mm -hmm. if you've had a history of any yes. heart problems in the past. Yeah. And But as far as like limitations to prevent you from having our new teeth now procedure from a medical standpoint, no, as long as you can, you know, if a doctor or we say that you're healthy enough to undergo the anesthesia, then yes, you can have this procedure. The only thing that would really limit someone mm -hmm. from having implants um, would be, we would really need to talk about how much radiation for patients who've had any type of head and neck cancer and have had radiation to the jaws, throat, face, then we want to get a copy of the radiology report mm -hmm. and that could limit what we can do from an implant standpoint. The only other thing that would limit possibly uh, placing implants into a patient would be anyone that's on some of the osteoporosis medications mm -hmm. and more the IV forms. Gotcha. So there's a couple drugs like Zomata and Reclast, which really can unfortunately affect the upper and lower jaws and prevent the bone from healing after a surgical procedure. And even with something simple as a tooth cleaning or a, a tooth extraction. Yeah. So those patients, we really go over your medical history in detail. Yeah. Um, and you know, make sure that we're doing the right thing and not going to yep. cause more harm than good yes. when we're trying to help someone. Um, but yeah, we go through everyone's everyone's medical history in detail and make sure that we're all on the same page so we can get through this safe. And we've got a very good track record yes. that we've had for a long time, yes. and we want to keep that. Yes, I like to joke around about that too. All of our patients have survived. Yes, <laughs> yes. absolutely. They've all woken up. <laughs> absolutely. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll move on. Sure. And, you know, there was yeah. one other question that yes. um, came up about the airport. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, you know, um, someone asked about the CT scans or the MRIs. Mm -hmm. We also usually get asked a lot about, well, can I go through an airport scanner mm -hmm. or is that going to set off any alarms? And the answer is no. Millions of people have dental implants. Yeah. And so when you go through, it's not going to set off any of those basic alarms. If you go through the one where you do put your arms above your head and it spins around, the implant will show up, but they know what that is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they see that all, every day, all day. Yeah. So that's not, not an issue at all. Yeah. Okay. So we're really excited about this because we've expanded our lab and we have a true dental milling center. And this is one of the main reasons that we're able to offer patients the temporary zirconia yeah. teeth because now we can, the milling capability, which takes time, mm -hmm. um, and if you do not have a lot of these machines, which now we do, mm -hmm. so we can start providing zirconia temporaries. Okay. And having this is super exciting. We're really excited about it, and it's going to help out a lot of patients in a lot of different ways. So me and my 
surgical staff. Um, they've been with me for years and I love all three of these girls. They're very, very helpful to me and almost scary at some times <laughs> so, uh, because doing one of these procedures, you know, I'll be at a certain step in the procedure and I'll be looking up, getting ready to ask yeah. for the next instrument. Mm -hmm. And they're standing there like this, like handing me the yes. instrument. It's already ready for me to just grab and go. Yeah. And, you know, that's not only makes my life easier, but it makes it a lot more efficient, which yes. ultimately makes it better and safer for the patient. Yep. Because the less that we're kind of like, hey, I need this. Oh, we don't know where it's at. Or I've got to look for it. Sorry, it's, in the, it's on the other table. Yeah. You know, when we can just kind of keep mm -hmm. moving systematically in a really efficient manner, that's safe and better for the patient. And it's the last time that a patient's yes, under exactly. general anesthesia. Yep. And when I say that it really takes the entire team here and we do have a big team, here's our team. And it really does take every one of these people to get the job done and get a patient in their ultimate goal and dream of having a nice looking fixed set of teeth. So one more patient that I do want to um, share with you guys. Mark, he's another one of my, I mean, all my patients are my favorite patients, but you know, he's just a very nice gentleman who'd been through a lot in the past and we were able to help him with not only our new teeth now procedure, but with the zygomatic implants. And he does a really nice job just kind of walking us through his journey that he had here at our office. Well, I'm happy I have teeth now. <laughs> you see what I did there, right? <laughs> My name is Mark, and I'm a real patient at New Teeth Now. This is Vertical Tampa. I am the worship pastor here. I oversee the band, the praise team, sound, anything music or audio I oversee. Being a musician, you know, and, and people used to always say to me, Mark, smile, smile, smile. They didn't understand that, no, I can't do that. But I can now. Well, I spent years, you know, uh, with dental issues. I remember being in a dentist's office and the lady said, one day you're gonna lose your teeth because I had periodontal disease. And I was like, oh, I'll just keep brushing them and, you know, do all my maintenance, it'll be okay. You know, it got more loose and more loose. Kept seeing the commercial saying, new teeth now, new teeth now. I was like, that's what I need now. And it was just, it's, so, it's hard to describe the feeling when you've been struggling so long, you know, with your smile and with your teeth, and now, you know, and I mean just instantly. It's, it's like, I went there with no teeth, and now I got teeth. <laughs> it's like, how does that happen? And uh, it was just a tremendous way to just to, like turn the page and say, okay, that was then, this is now, so no more having to worry about people looking at me and my smile is not right or my teeth aren't right, uh, how does my breath smell? I don't even have to think about what I can eat, I just eat whenever I want. I don't have to think about what I can't do anymore because with these teeth, I can do whatever I want. Well, my family is just growing and growing. They're happy for me, you know, that now I can just be dad, and, you know, enjoy them. Because you only live once. And people say, well, you can't take it with you. Yes, but I'm still here. So as long as I'm here, I mean, why not, you know, look the best I can and feel the best I can about myself? To me, it was just worth it. I have a smile, I have confidence, I'm more relaxed around people, I can talk and smile, and I feel much better about myself. I walked in one way, I left a new person. I am, I am ecstatic that I call new teeth now. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't call anybody else. And we are live. We are back. So, Mark, awesome. He looks you know, amazing. He, he does. He looks really, really good. And there's his, you know, his before and after. And, you know, he's not really smiling in that before mm -hmm. picture, obviously, but it's just he was kind of embarrassed with his teeth yeah. and and just as a very interesting guy. You know, he's performs in his church, he preaches, he sings, he yeah. does a lot of different stuff. Yeah. And, you know, for someone like that who people are looking yeah. at, looking up to you know, and he's kind of in their face, it, it can bother, yeah. it can bother you. You know, if you're, if you're self-conscious about the appearance yeah. of your teeth, you know, that's something that um, can take its toll on you. 
So I think we had a couple more questions. Yes, we in. did, Doc. So there was one um, person wanted to know how painful are quad zygomas compared to getting just two. So there's really not a big difference at all yeah. whether we do all traditional, mm -hmm. all qu or quad zygomas or traditional mixed with a few zygomas. Um, the you may get a little bit more bruising and swelling just in a different spot. Yes. But as far as like pain level afterwards, there's, we do not hear a difference yes. that patients will talk about, whether they've had quad zygomas. And sometimes when I see a patient for their first or second post-op mm -hmm. appointment, you know, they come in and they may, I, I've even got to look because I look at their scan to see and remind myself, well, did that patient have two zygomas or just one yeah. or none yeah. or, or quad, you know, and that's, I think that's a good thing because yeah. you really can't tell the difference. Even looking in your mouth, doing an exam, we take the teeth off mm -hmm. and I'm looking at your, your implants and the connectors and it's hard for me even to see. Yeah. Like, is that a zygoma? And I'll have, you know, either Amanda, Zoe, or Monica can pull up the x-ray yeah. and I'll be like, oh, that's not a zygoma. I thought it was, you know. Yeah. So you just, and that's a good thing because that means the body heals really well around those, the gums heal well, and, and patients forget too. You know, like, hey, did we do a zygoma? And they're like, you sure did, right here. And we look at the x-ray and it's on this side. <laughs> so that's, you know, they, there's not a big difference at all with the recovery Perfect. of zygomas or not. Gotcha. And then this other question is a funny one. Um, will this patient need to fire their current dentist? <laughs> no, so <laughs> we work with yes. a lot of general dentist or other dental providers when we're doing yeah. this procedure if they're comfortable with you know with the with implants then definitely you do not need to fire yeah. them you know you would come here for the surgery we would put your teeth on and then you could still use them like if you don't live here around close to us yeah. like just say you lived in alabama and you've got the same dentist that you've had in montgomery for a few years mm -hmm. and you you know they haven't done anything bad your teeth are failing but or you have dentures yeah. or whatever and you want implants. You could come here for the procedure and then they could help you keep them clean mm -hmm. every six months, yep. you know, when exactly. you're back at home. So no, you do not need to fire <laughs> your general dentist, nor would we ever want <laughs> you to do that yes, unless don't. they're a bad general dentist. Yes. <laughs> and then we can talk to you. Yes, that's a different case. And, and get recommendations. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Perfect. I All right. So the new teeth now procedure, we've kind of talked about new teeth now a lot tonight, but pretty much this is the entire process. You come in for your consult, that's the first step. Mm -hmm. Actually, the first step is making the phone call to schedule the consult, and that's a huge step for some patients. The next biggest step is actually making it through the doors, you know, because we see a lot of people who are scared of the dentist and scared of having a procedure done. And, you know, for a patient to actually come through the doors and sit and talk to me and discuss, I feel like once they meet me personally, they come in for the consult, they're a little more at ease. Yes. But making that step to actually call and schedule the consult and then, you know, keeping that consult and coming through the yeah. doors, that's, that's a big step for a lot of patients. And, you know, when you come in for the consult, then we discuss and go through all the preoperative medical clearances that we would need. We get your impressions, which is what we use to make the um, temporary teeth with. Then we do the new teeth nail surgery, mm -hmm. and then we do all the post-op appointments and adjustments if needed. Then we place the final teeth uh, uh, somewhere around six months later is where, when we start making those final teeth. And then the routine care and maintenance, which just includes what we already talked about the every six months having your teeth cleaned by a general dentist. And that's, you know, that's the best way if you're going to invest some time and money in doing this procedure, then that's how you can take care of those and make them last and be healthy. So some other resources, I think you're going to yeah. kind of tell patients um, Yes. about these yes. resources they can go to. Yes, and right before I actually jump into the resources, Doc, we had one more final question. Sure. Um, this patient wanted to know, are the teeth removed every six months and will the screws get replaced? Uh, so the teeth will be, we, well, we highly encourage the teeth to be removed every six months. Mm -hmm. We want that to happen. The only way we can know what's going on underneath those bridges yep. is to take them off, 
Look mm -hmm. at your gums, make sure there's nothing trapped. There's no calculus or food particle that kind of got, you know, embedded underneath between the gums and the bridge. And that's the best way possible to keep you as healthy as we can with your oral health. And replacing screws, yeah, occasionally we replace those because they get investigated and we look at those. They don't get replaced every time we take your teeth off and nor should they need to be replaced. But if we start to see one where, you know, it looks like it, the little driver slipping or starting to uh, spin a little bit, then definitely if it's a yeah. question mm -hmm. or after a certain amount of time, we may replace them. Yep. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, I think that's all of our questions for tonight. Perfect. And so we'll pop back to the resources. And so we have a lot of resources on our YouTube channel. Dr. Kirkpatrick has a lot of his past webinars on there that you can watch and it's pre-recorded. And then we also have our New Teeth Now website, which has a plethora of information that will answer any questions, like if you're traveling, resources, um, financing, things like that will all be located on our New Teeth Now website. Well, thank you guys for joining us and hopefully I'll see you soon for a consult.